Well, I want to welcome uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, both to the United States and to New York. Uh, as I just said in the speech uh, that I gave before the UN General Assembly, uh, the bonds between the United States and Israel are unbreakable. And the United States' commitment to Israel's security is unbreakable. Indeed, uh, I think it's fair to say that today our security cooperation uh, is stronger than it has ever been. Uh, I'm looking forward to a good discussion with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, about the events not only here in the United Nations, but also uh, the developments that have been taking place in the region. Uh, as I just indicated, peace uh, cannot be imposed on the parties. It's going to have to be negotiated. Uh, one side's actions in the United Nations uh, will achieve neither statehood nor self-determination for the Palestinians, but Israelis and Palestinians sitting down together and working through these very difficult issues uh, that have kept the parties apart for decades now, that is what can achieve uh, what is, I know, the ultimate goal of all of us, which is uh, two states side by side living in peace and security. Uh, recent events in the region remind us of how fragile peace can be, uh, and why the pursuit of Middle East peace is more urgent than ever. Uh, but as we pursue that uh, peace, I know that the Prime Minister recognizes that America's commitment to Israel uh, will never waver, and that our pursuit of a just and lasting peace uh, is one that uh, is not only compatible, but we think puts uh, Israel's security at the forefront. So it is a great pleasure to have uh, the Prime Minister here. I want to thank him uh, for uh, his efforts and his cooperation. Uh, and I'm looking forward to an excellent discussion. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you, Mr. President, for standing with Israel and supporting peace through direct negotiations. We both agree that this is the only way to achieve peace. We both agree that Palestinians and Israelis should sit down together and negotiate an agreement of uh, mutual recognition and security. Uh, I think this is the, the only way to get to a stable and durable peace. Uh, but you've also made it clear that the Palestinians deserve a state, but it's a state that has to make that peace with Israel. And therefore, their attempt to shortcut this process, not negotiate a peace, that attempt to get uh, a membership, uh, a state membership in the United Nations uh, will not succeed. Uh, I think the Palestinians want to achieve a state through the international community, but they're not prepared yet to give peace to Israel in return. And my hope is that uh, there will be other leaders in the world, responsible leaders, who will heed your call, Mr. President, uh, and oppose this effort to shortcut peace negotiations, in fact, to avoid them. Uh, because I think that Avoiding these negotiations is bad for Israel, bad for the Palestinians, uh, and bad for peace. Now, I know that these leaders are under enormous pressure, and I know that they're also, in this House, from personal experience, I can tell you, uh, automatic majorities against Israel. But I think that standing your ground, taking this position of principle, which is also, I think, the, the right position to achieve peace, I think this is a, this is a badge of honor. And I want to thank you for wearing that badge of honor and also I, to express my hope that others will follow your example, Mr. President. So I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.